Julia Dunaway and welcome to my YouTube channel. I make whole food, plant-based, no oil dishes and I try to make them taste really good. So today's recipe is, I just call it crispy tofu bowl and it has potatoes with gravy instead of rice. I make a lot of things with rice. So um, somebody saw my dish on Facebook. It looked like this. I'm going to have the finished dish during this video, but Sometimes when you post pictures of food, people just go crazy. And it was just kind of something I made because I make a lot of stuff with tofu. So um, I was playing around with my potatoes and gravy that I made for my Thanksgiving dishes and then added the uh, crispy tofu on top. And then someone said, oh, that looks like a Kentucky Fried Chicken vegan bowl. Well, I didn't even know they had such a thing. So anyway, we're going to make the crispy tofu bowl. Now we're not going to make the mashed potatoes and gravy because they're already on YouTube. There's a, a YouTube video I made back in November called Thanksgiving Sides. It has my potatoes and gravy, which are, they turned out great. I love them and they're already on here. So we don't have to remake those, but we'll use them in today's dish. But what I do need to show you is the tofu. So I make tons of tofu. I make, you know, all kinds of tofu out of this organic extra firm tofu. You can get it at the regular grocery store. My husband gets it at Walmart. He goes for me because I don't want to go to Walmart. <clears throat> and then um, I've got it over here pressing, and it's pretty much done. By pressing it, I just wrap it in. I have these white cotton all-purpose kitchen cloths that I use only for food things like wrapping tofu or you know making baked goods and stuff. So I've got the tofu wrapped in these towels. I have two blocks of tofu. So my tofu has been pressed underneath. This is my high tech system. I just put a cutting board and a heavy book, a book I don't use, Bon Appetit Desserts, which is like the world's heaviest book. And then I've got two blocks. So why don't I use a tofu press? Well, I have a tofu press or two different ones. And I found that they tended to kind of distort the shape of the tofu. Sometimes they weren't kind of they weren't reliable. Sometimes the tofu would get crushed on the edges and have this kind of funny shape. So I just kind of thought my old-fashioned version of a tofu press, which is just a cutting board with a book, works just fine. So that's what I stick to. Plus, it's less stuff to keep up with. Because when you start getting a lot of gadgets, you have to store them and do whatever. So I have Two tables, three tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. That's this type. I use the Kikoman low sodium soy sauce. It still has sodium, but a lot less than regular. Um, we could also use coconut aminos. If you don't use soy sauce, some people find this as a good substitute, but I'm going to use a couple tablespoons of it in addition to the soy sauce because it adds a nice element. <clears throat> it's made from coconut. So it has a little bit of a different flavor, which I think adds to this. And then we can put in some um, <clears throat> rice vinegar, just a tablespoon. This is an organic rice vinegar. We don't want to put too much in here. So we'll just put a tablespoon. You could use um, this kind, regular. You can use brown rice vinegar, the light colored type. This one, since it's organic, is a little bit uh, darker than regular rice vinegar, tahini. I'm going to shake it up. I like this mighty sesame tahini that I get. I get it on Amazon, but I have seen it in stores, two tablespoons of that. I like it because, look, it's pourable. It's easy to use. You just, you know, you don't have to stir the jar and mess around with it. And then we're going to put in some seasonings. Uh, we're going to put in some poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning is a little bit of everything. It has we could read the, the label, but you, it has sage, onion, white pepper, parsley, cumin, ginger, and different poultry seasonings have different ingredients, but this one has, has those. We'll put a couple of teaspoons of that in here. And that saves us from having to put a million different seasonings, because remember, this is kind of like a chicken nuggets, but I don't like to call anything that makes it sound like non-plant-based stuff. So um, we'll put that in there. And then paprika for color. And I forgot to get an ingredient. I forgot my miso. So I'm going to have to just skip it for today. But you can add a tablespoon of 
of white miso and I'll put it in the recipe and it really it's not going to change it that much it's just another element of flavor I just use like a white miso paste I'll put the brand in and everything but you know it's not going to change our basic recipe any it's just another element that you can add garlic powder one teaspoon and really you know this could be any seasoning so I'm just putting in some things that poultry seasoning made sense to me because you know, this is kind of along the lines of a nugget, you know what I mean? And so poultry seasoning is a seasoning that is usually used at the holidays to season your dressing and stuff that you serve with poultry. So it's not made of poultry. And then we just mix this up. And, you know, there are some other things we could add. Like I'm looking at all my spices that are on a rack right over here. And I'm thinking maybe some red chili flakes would be good. So, and this is how I develop recipes a lot of times, is I just look at stuff I have on hand. So I didn't think about doing this, but I added a little red chili flakes, not too many. A friend of mine had a recipe for red chili for soup, and it called for a teaspoon of red chili flakes. That soup was hot, and not in a good way. And other things I could add to this are like, I have all this fresh jack seasoning, like, you know, um, tofu scramble seasoning, and there's so many different things I could put in here, but I'm gonna stop at that. But remember, I didn't put in my tablespoon of miso, but you could. Now I'm gonna take my tofu, and I'm just gonna break it off with my hands, but in big pieces, because if you break it off too small, it's just gonna be like tiny little crumbles, and we want kind of chunks, not too big, but let's say half inch or so chunks, because um, we don't want them to turn into crumbles. I've made a lot of tofu crumbles in my time, which, you know, are just, you know, very small pieces of tofu. And we use those in tacos and, you know, burrito bowls and stuff like that. But this one is more of a, this type. So you could do it very quickly. And then all we're going to do is we are going to mix it up and get the seasonings on these and get them on a baking sheet. Then we're going to put them in the oven at 375 for about 20 minutes. Move them around a little bit, cook them for another 10, 15 minutes until they're the texture and crispiness that you like. But before we do that, we're gonna put a little bit of uh, arrowroot powder, corn starch, some kind of starch on them because that's what's gonna make these. And I'm gonna use my hands because I think the spoon is okay to get started, but really get in there with your hands. The reason we need some kind of um, powder or something on the outside of it is that will give it the crispy texture, okay? So I'm going to keep working on this and I'll be right back with the next step. Okay, well, I went to get the miso just to show you and I'm not going to use it this time because it's a little too late to put it in, but that's the type I would have used, a tablespoon of that. And the next step is going to be, this is all pretty much covered with the sauce. And now what I'm going to do is, and it looks even like it could use a little more sauce, but that's okay. It will develop the color that we need, but we're going to put some of this arrowroot powder. And if you don't have that, you could use cornstarch. Uh, arrowroot powder isn't something you find everywhere. I noticed that we can use, um, let's use about four tablespoons. I noticed that the store that I shop at a lot didn't have any, which surprised me because I thought they would have everything, but oh, they didn't have arrowroot powder. And we're just gonna mix that in, just kind of toss it gently. Remember, we don't want our tofu to turn into tiny little, in tiny little crumbs, and then we have our nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is one of those things that you can easily overdo it. Like, you know, I, I always look at recipes before I cook anything. I'm gonna put two tablespoons in, because that's plenty for me. But I have, uh, over the years since I've been eating plant-based, seen so many recipes that use a lot of nutritional yeast, like half a cup or a, you know, huge quantities. This two tablespoons and two blocks of tofu is not very much. So that's about right for me. If you find a big piece of tofu, go ahead and break it up. Some of my pieces are a little irregular. So I only use two tablespoons, but if you're 
you know, a person who really loves nutritional yeast, you know, you could use more. You don't have to stop at that, that amount. So then I'm going to, I've got my baking sheet here, and I'm going to, put this over here where you can see it better. I'm going to put the tofu on this baking sheet. And I'm just gonna like transfer it neatly. That's the key factor here is as neatly as possible. And this is a big baking sheet. This is a half sheet baking sheet. So your typical baking sheet's half this size. So this is the like, um, what, 12 by 16 or something. So if you have your everyday normal size baking sheet, you're gonna need two baking sheets. One is not gonna be enough because we want this to be spread out. We don't want this tofu to be all crammed together because if it is, it's not gonna brown. And part of this, remember we called it crispy tofu. We want there to be opportunity for it to be out there by itself so it has some surface that's, uh, that gets covered. Okay, and we're only gonna, we're gonna use a regular oven, 375. We don't have to use the air fryer. We don't have to use convection setting. I'm trying to make it to where anybody can make this in their home oven. Because sometimes when I use the air fryer, people will say, oh, but I don't have an air fryer. And how do you do it with an oven? So I thought, well, we'll just do this in the regular oven. And it turned out fine in the regular oven. Now, to reheat it, to use in my bowl, right before I got ready to use it, yeah, it was really good to put it in the air fryer briefly, like at 350 for, you know, three minutes or something. And that crisped it up really nicely. Okay, so that's it. I've got it. I'm going to wash this off my hands. I've got it on the baking sheet. It's ready to go in the oven. And that's it. I'll just put it in the oven at 375. And we're going to keep it in there, like I said, for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we just turn it gently and then cook it for another 10 minutes. So when I come back, we'll have the crispy tofu and we'll assemble the rest of the bowl. And I think you're going to love it. So I've pulled the um, tofu out of the oven <clears throat> and it looks pretty good to me it's nice and crunchy and it's got some nice color so you can see it it's uh, all some of the pieces are crunchier than others but they all have that little crispy crust and that's from the use of arrowroot powder corn starch potato starch whatever kind of starch powder you use on it will give it that crispy kind of a an exterior which is what we want so now we have to assemble our bowl and that was remember I showed you earlier the picture that I posted that had the the nice crispy tofu bowl and everyone said oh you have to make that so I'm gonna set my tofu nuggets aside for a second and we're gonna assemble our bowl so we have our choice of we could use a, just a plain white bowl this was the bowl in, in my picture where it looked so nice, but that bowl may be a little small for most people. I think it's perfect for me, but I'll use a little bit bigger bowl. So of course we've got to get our potatoes in. And remember I told you the potato recipe is in the uh, video called Thanksgiving Sides, and I'll put a link to it here in this, in this video. So I'm gonna put a nice generous serving of potatoes on the bottom because, you know, people love potatoes. It's a lot, but if you think about it, it's just potatoes and some cashew cream. So it doesn't have the butter and uh, regular cream and stuff in regular potatoes. And the thing about um, plant-based mashed potatoes is they're a little stiff because you're only using plant milk. And plant milk is never going to make your potatoes come out real fluffy and creamy like regular potatoes unless you put a lot in and then it kind of waters it down and makes it taste too much like plant milk and less like potatoes so there's our potatoes and we can pile on other stuff if we want to but we're going to kind of go easy on the other stuff i've got some corn and i'm going to put a little section of corn over here some people mix the potatoes in with the corn i kind of don't like corn and potatoes mixed up so i'm not going to do that although i did get some potatoes on my corn here Looks a little messy. And then I, uh, in my picture, I had zucchini. So I have some steamed zucchini that I made uh, a couple of days ago, yesterday. 
for something else. So I'm just gonna use my steam zucchini. And I steam vegetables all the time. So I, that's why I had it in my other dish because I happen to have some or I made some or whatever. But you know, I like to have vegetables with my food. I don't wanna just have nothing but brown food. So that's why I have my little section of corn and a little section of zucchini because I think it makes it more appetizing. Then we can have our section, we can put the tofu pieces on top, the crispy tofu, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to find some pretty brown pieces, my favorite looking pieces, and get them over the top of this. And this is so good. Now, doesn't that look like, I mean, I don't know what the Kentucky Fried Vegan Chicken Bowl looks like, but this looks pretty good to me. So we got that, and then let's talk for a minute about our gravy. So I have some gravy in my pot here, because remember I told you that the gravy and the potato recipe are in my other video. So this is that delicious gravy, and I do have to say, this gravy does take a little time because you have to take onions and mushrooms, celery, uh, some garlic or whatever. There's a bunch of different things, and you cook that, strain it, add some brown rice flour and you come up with this gravy. Don't take shortcuts with it because this gravy is really good and plant-based gravy is hard to make taste good. A lot of recipes for plant-based gravy will just have, oh, just take some veggie broth and add flour to it and there you have gravy. Well, it tastes like nothing. It's kind of, it's kind of flat tasting. So this gravy actually tastes really good. And it looks good too. I think you're gonna see, this is just the same recipe that was on the other video. And I'm just gonna pour it over the top of these nuggets. Now I'm gonna leave some that don't have gravy on them because you don't want to cover it all up because look how the pretty gr brown crispy part is. We don't wanna cover it all up. And then what I always do on my food is I have little garnishes. <laughs> so I have Fresno chilies, which I grow in my garden, and they're beautiful and red. I have some thinly sliced green onions, scallions. I love the flavor of those. And then I have some cilantro. Now, do you have to put these herbs on top and peppers? No, uh, you don't have to put this on, on your food. But if you um, watch any of my videos, you know that I tend to put things on my food that make it look pretty because I, and it tastes good. It gives a little, you could call it um, a little spark, whatever you want to call it. So there we go. This is the crispy tofu bowl. It's just like my picture that people wanted me to make. And it has the crispy tofu, the creamy, as creamy as I could get them, mashed potatoes, the Thanksgiving gravy, some steamed vegetables that don't have to be in there, some little toppings. And then we have this wonderful, wonderful flavor pack bowl. I'll even taste it for you. Make sure it's good. I know it's going to taste good because I've had it before, but you know, there's just something about this combination of the crispy tofu. Mm, that is really good. The gravy and all of it, the corn, everything just kind of goes together well. So if you're craving some kind of comfort food and you want to eat something that you know, looks like something you used to have, used to have, try this, the crispy tofu bowl with mashed potatoes and gravy and plenty of toppings. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you watch my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook. I do teach Zoom classes all the time. My next Zoom class is gonna be February the 19th and it's on, um, Quick grab and go meals. So it's for busy, busy people. So if you're interested in that, go to my website, chef-julia.com and sign up for the class. So um, again, I'll see you at my next video, which is gonna be chewy pecan cookies. And they're gonna be good. So I hope you watch that one too. Thanks again. Bye-bye.